PC going to be doing some tech vids on Core T in the City. Just a quick note to say, I'm chewing out with a lava lamp and a 5k run. Running's the only thing that's kept me from uh, feeling down. It's a great way, or exercise anyway, it's a good way to keep the demons at bay. <clears throat> Sometimes if you're at the end of a project and uh, you're left with nothing uh, big going on, you can end up getting in a rut. It can happen, does happen. Especially if you're on the creative side or you're mad on your welding and building a, a car or restoring a car, then it all comes to an end and you think, I've done it, what am I going to do? Can happen. For me, I took up um, running, not crazy running, but running and, and biking. I got myself a bike and uh, I do try and do um, three lots of 5k running outside or on the treadmill each week, which helps with this. So we do sometimes touch on mental health issues on the channel. Feel free to discuss and uh, talking about it's the best way. So uh, if you've come to the end of a project like I have and you want to keep the demons at bay, one suggestion is uh, the outdoors or if it's bad weather, um, running indoors if you join a gym, but I know they're expensive. Or wrap up and brisk walk it outdoors even if it's uh, bad weather. But um, we've got supposed to have six months of summer, so I've been trying to make the most of it anyway. Let's cut to the main videos, which is going to be the tech bench, switch on. We've been to the tip and pinched some stuff. Well, it was donated to me. Uh, we've done a, um, a little music vi vi uh, video, road trip video. We've done a few other repairs with Fix a Loma. It's all coming up in this episode, which is a bit of infill. Roll the credits. PC Cortina City on the tech vid and the garage clean up. Got a, the cars outside at the moment. You've just seen the engine uh, reinstall video and we're doing some road testing as well. So um, KP is just outside for now. We're also doing some ground works outside, clearing some gravel. We've got some tech stuff going on on the bench for this Saturday night video. A uh, couple of things been tidied up around the workshop. We're still going on with tidying up, getting some of the unused paints or rarely used paints and stuff in a long-term storage box, just so we unclutter. Because I don't know about you, but I get cluttered pretty quick. I don't know why. I think it's because you're always taking on other jobs. Coca-Cola machine made it onto the wall there. A little bit racy at the top. If I do that, we're good to go on YouTube. Actually, nothing exposed except the camera's exposure. Uh, the Krypton machines had an improvement with the starter button switch fitted. So you've got a manual start for you when you're testing your engine setup. The Krypton machine runs really nice, actually. As you've seen throughout the uh, recent engine testing stuff. So I'm just OCDing all my stuff, wiping down all my tools. Arranging the spanners back in order. This just wants a slight um, touch up now. That one's the wrong way. We've just got to get all them right. Put those back straight. Then go through those drawers and make sure everything's good there. There's some clutter on top to get rid of. I've got the electronics department open again. We're done with eight tracks on the hole. All those there are waiting for colour coding now. What we do with the eight tracks for each car that's going to get its eight track the um plastic covers color coded in so this one's papa's kp's and kp's in in the brown color so that matches the dash so then those eight tracks are all done we've conquered the eight track happy with how it all worked out plenty of eight tracks to be going on with we've also been doing some 90s tape transfers and Ash Mahood, big bad Ash Mahood supplied me with a video recorder. It did chew a tape, but it wasn't the video 
sorry, the camcorder's fault. I'm using the camcorder to record my 90s tapes onto YouTube. So I had to take the cover off it, but it's okay. The cover was off and I could get the tape out. Some tapes, funnily enough, some of the tapes I'm doing, you'll see these upload soon, were uh, underwater. The tapes were underwater. What happened is I had a lovely storage box like this. And luckily, just the, my old VHS uh, Video 8 camera and one tape that was in the camera was in one of these boxes and the garage roof at the back I've got a lean to, which is dry normally, but one drip managed to fill the case with water. The whole camera was underwater with the tape. I lost the camera. I had to actually destroy the camera to get the tape out. That's why that one stuck. And I thought, and the crazy thing was, it was one of my good tapes of a lot of Cortina stuff. And I was like, no, 1992, 93 Cortina road footage, gone. I thought it was gone. <clears throat> anyway, I took, I managed to get the tape out, then let the uh, release tang in on the tape and, and just see if it, the spool turned. At, at first it was a little stiff. I thought, I won't let the, the player do this. I'll do it by hand. And then it broke free. Um, it was to, it was stretched, so I had to cut a piece out, but I got it going. And funnily enough, there's a few little bits where it's uh, it it sh it jitters on the screen, but we can clean that up. The rest of the tape survived. I couldn't believe it. So anyway, yeah, lots of clearing out and lots of work been going on. So that cover was off my new handy cam, which was really good to get the uh, chewed tape out. So that's fine. And then on the bench here, we've got a monster machine that I'm doing at the moment. This is a top of the range. What's the case? It's a top of the range battery charger, bench battery charger. I think it's l -Bec, l -Tech. It's an l -Tech 750. And they are serious chargers. I mean, I think it can put out 40 amps. It's the real... Deal. I mean, you can see how good this is. It's faulty, but I'll just show you how well built it is. This is, if you're into electronics, you'll understand about build quality. You've got Chinatown, then you've got the Germans. This is this is German built, and the quality of construction is just quality. You might say quality, but it doesn't work. But well, nothing's uh, nothing's infallible. That's one monster setup. You can see the size of the terminal connections on it. They're huge. There they are. Back here, look. Choke. Oh, that's a, a choke over them there. Still get a little bit of LED flickering, but I don't think our flickering's as bad. And this video is just a test. Out an hour with an hour's worth of me messing around. It's, it's filler material for for bored people on YouTube and for me to test out whether I've fo foxed fixed this camera problem because when I do the engine on the Krypton, which I've got to redo, the Krypton uh, machine video was so stroby. It was like being in the middle of a a, a 90s rave. So um, it was unusable footage, unfortunately. I loved that video, so I've got to redo it. Right, anyway, I um, got this powered up, and it comes up with a fault. It, 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 um, this has two stages, trickle and main charge. So if you put a battery on that's almost full, this will trickle it, because it'll, re it'll recognise the voltage when you start the cycle. It's got an LCD panel, and you can do different cycles. Put your crop clip leads on your battery, it fires up, this boots up, it works, starts to trickle charge, and that's fine, and it'll trickle charge till it's full, and it works. But if your battery's drained, and it wants to put in plenty of amps, it flips to a different circuit inside. When it does that, it cuts out, and it says internal error. Reading the manual online, internal error says relay fault. So... I thought I'll check the relays and I found a duff relay. And these look good quality. Again, I thought, well, here's the top off to see what it was like. It wasn't burnt. It just didn't. When you put 12 volts to it, it just didn't close the contacts. I just put 12 volts on the, my croc clips here, my power supply. You can hear it clicking. 
yet the contacts don't make a closed circuit. So we had the beep tester on, which is just a continuity test. It's just a bleeper. When you touch the metal contacts together, the thing goes bleep. You can get these for next to nothing. This will bleep now, but obviously it's the uh, one hand cliche job. I can do that. So I'll be very impressed with my dexterity. There you go. So that's that over there bleeping. That tests other things as well, voltage. It's basically a bench multimeter, is what I'm trying to say. But not everyone who watches is um, au fait or familiar with electronics, yet they're interested. So sometimes I will talk in a, a, a novice or beginner's guide um, language. And sometimes people say, well, that's uh, not the right way to describe electronics. No. I'm just keeping it simple. I don't want to be too techy. Now then, we have to put the other relay in. I found a 12 volt relay. I've gone, this one's this one's got plenty of amps, 40 amp switching. We don't know what this one is. It wasn't marked. Can you believe it? It wasn't marked. Well, the top was, but it didn't have the current rating on it. So anyway, it looked powerful based by these tracks. Based on the tracks, there's one set there. It doesn't use the normally close. It just works on, on a normally open, which close when the power goes to it. So I've tested it on 12 volts. This clicks. And the two white wires are the ones that will join together when it clicks. So it'll, it'll complete the circuit there. That gets that problem out of the way. Whether that solves it, I don't know. But what it would do is it would trip out and just say internal error on the screen when it got only on the heavy charge cycle, not on the trickle. It worked on the trickle. I'm going to solder that in now and power it up, see what happens. I'm going in with the soldered iron. I've got these other tin pads. I'm not going to put the wires through the pads i'm just gonna go on the surface it just means i don't have to desolder again i used the desoldering pump by the way to pull to pull the relay out so i'm going to bring that into your screen now and what it is it's a soldering gun it's coming into your screen on the right has a vacuum attachment to it and the soldering tip at the end which is hollow what happens is, as it once, once that tip's hot enough to melt solder, you can control the temperature, by the way, you pull the trigger and the vacuum will start and it basically just sucks the solder up into this cylinder there and you can empty that later. It's a great tool for, for getting things out and I'll pan you around to it. If I can twist this camera, I should be able to... Oh, sorry about the clicky clicks there. The... So you can set the temperature and that's how it just basically draws the solder out. Back around to here. Should be able to put, we just, it's just six connections. Should just be able to put the solder on top of the pads. I'll go opposites on these pads. That should be it. We can test whether this is going to work. Doesn't want to take to that pad for some reason. I'm wondering if they've got a coaching on them. Probably have. One's okay. Yeah, it's like a lacquer on that pad. Very unusual that happens. That would not normally happen that I don't know why I'd have to scratch that pad a little bit it usually just takes straight to the pad the pad is the little circle where the solder goes through and I thought that was fluxed up but I've got some copper coming out there. I'm just cleaning up a bit of area to get the, the wire onto. It's not fluxed. 
actually, would you believe, actually struggling to get this to, to, to go. I think that's it now. Right, we're on. Those ones are okay. Right, got it. Go in with the wires. Let's see if this fixes the battery charger. Bring the light in a bit more. Connection one. It's a little bit cramped. It's not that bad. A touch cramped here. I think that's on. And this is where I do a slightly increase in the temperature of the iron. It's just on the border because it's such a big pad. This iron's a sort of down a medium range. I'm talking about the, the wattage of the iron. Let me just trim these. The wattage of the iron. The thicker the wires, the larger the wattage. You can turn your iron temperature up on this one. It has got a limit. It's fine for these smaller wires. And that's it, and we'll have to just glue gun this relay down. Let's see what happens now. Right, I'm gonna connect this up, that's in. So that simulates that relay. That's the best I can come up with. But certainly a nice beefy relay that. Whatever you need there uh, fits between there. Look, oh, it's handy. Right, I'm gonna power this up and test it. Let's see what happens. Now it might look a rough piece of kit. This will clean up, but it's very well built. And they're very expensive. They're at least a thousand pounds, these. I acquired this faulty. It's actually, strictly speaking, don't belong to me, but knowing one day the person who gave me will ask for it back. Too late and the repair bill has attracted interest. Uh, right, we're ready to test it, but yeah, it's, it, it's they're expensive pieces of kit. Boom! Did you hear that crackle then? I'm going to turn it on. There we go, we're booting up. Start charge mode, so we could do connecting the battery up. And this is how far it gets. So we'll connect to the battery, read the voltage 12.4, so that would probably I have, I have no idea why sometimes these cameras decide to just turn off. I'm going to start the charge cycle. System test. 12 volts charge on. Now the current here ramps it up. 300 milliamps, 400 milliamps going up. As soon as it gets to 2 amp, it, that's when it dies because it flips to a different circuit. Up to 2 amp is classed as a trickle circuit. And it comes up with the error, internal error, and that was what I thought was that relay. I mean, it couldn't have done any harm changing this, because it's definitely gone. Whether it gets us out of the bag, I don't know, because could it be two faults? We just don't know. One amp, the voltage rise, and so you can use it as a trickle charger. So if you was to put it on a car, the battery was already pretty much there, and put this on, you can trickle it, but it's overkill for that when you can get a little one for... 30 quid, there would be no point. This is for when you're really flat and it can knock out serious current and get you up and running. 1.9 dead, cut out internal error, so that hasn't fixed it. So we're still off. We'll still have to carry on investigating, even with that relay. Okay, never mind, it's worth a shot. PC's back, I might try it again. The reason being, when I was holding them relay wires on, you got some six pads, six footprint pads were the relay solders and two of them were spare ones it just uses the normally open set of contacts and i've soldered the coil of the relay to the spare pads instead of the coil pads so the relay would never have been able to come off schoolboy error powering back up and trying again just in case it was that so switch on from the front 
powering up. You can't see it now. I'll bring you around this side. Hold on. Right, start the charge mode. Yes. System test. Now I heard a relay go on that. I heard a re that that's behaved differently straight away because that came on earlier on that didn't happen so something's obvious something's changed straight away half an amp going in at the moment but i did hear this flip in and out so straight away something's different but we know when it gets to two amp if it goes over two amp it's fixed one amp 1.2 certainly improved it because that's activating I'm hoping that's not 24 volt relay either. I've got a 12 volt I'm going to measure that because some system part of the system is 24 1.92 dead lost it internal error good try never mind so we've still got a problem with it but it shows that that works now so we're one stage ahead. I just don't know why it does it. I might get it might get beyond our capabilities. It's such a shame because it's a nice unit when when they work. Okay, I shall carry on checking. Okay, still on the super duper battery charger. I think I've found another fault. So you've got to get your clues off. Usually, when something's well built, the weak spot is always either moving parts, connectors, and stuff like that. Usually, in that order, and you go down further and further down. Microelectronics and chips normally don't give up amplifier chips sometimes but usually connectors are the first to go or moving parts and the moving parts in this case especially around the high current area which is what we're talking about when this works on trickle charge <clears throat> and I think that's the trickle charge really or that one no it's that one comes in first I think we're going to presume that the other ones probably a pair a plus and minus come across but I'm looking at the continuity of the contacts here. So when I touch the contacts and then activate the relay, I'm not getting a good clean connection. You have to push hard on the relay for the pad to make contact. So the relay contacts I think are dirty. That's what I think is happening. It doesn't even work on the return contact. If you look, you've got to bring it back. That should be now, that's in its normally closed position. So normally close isn't working for starters. Look how, when I wibble, woggle, wibble, wobble, weeble, these contacts, see, just a slight touch. So well, that's dirty. So that, that's not working as it should. It might not need the normally closed position. It might only want the open contacts. That's picking up, but it's there. That's not getting it. Camera's in the way as usual, but these are just suspect. They're all they're all suspect. Just not getting what I would expect out of these contacts. I'm going to have to desolder all three of these relays and look at the condition of the contacts. Can't really test them in circuit here. So I talked about that desoldering tool, and that's what it is. We're going to blast them out, because that other relay at that end, that's more to do with the mains size. I don't even know if that would have had any difference, this. When I've traced this back, it's actually switching some of the main side. And funnily enough, the contacts are normally closed, even with the relay out of the circuit. So I don't know what's going on over that side. But this is certainly suspect. There's a big 60 amp fuse here, that's all right. But <clears throat> I think what happens is it'll monitor when, when the relays flick across, 
it, these are obviously to stop if there's a fault on your leads because there's so much, much amps, these would drop out, it's a safety thing. When these flip across, it's probably not seeing any current that side and interpreting that as a fault. Like I said, when it, it, on the screen it says internal error. And when you look up in the manual, internal error simply tells you there's a problem with the relay. So it all points to that and the evidence that they're not... Um, got you know they're not bleeping out good on the continuity when you when you push them across you're not getting a nice clean bleep means that possibly the faces of these are, are mucky i believe they're all 12 volts so we could just and i think it's only going to use the normally open side in other words closed when it's on so we could put any relay we want in there that's that's enough current in other words some automotive relays if we got stuck Let's just see. We'll, t we'll flip the board and I'll, I'll show you the desolder in action. We'll just take one off for now with the desolder, then you get a taste of what it looks like using that gun, just in case you're curious. Appreciate this ain't Cortina stuff, but as I said, now and again we throw a tech vid in and a little bit of a, a ramble around the workshop just to break things up, just to keep the channel going. Don't forget, um, we've got Patreon as well. Nice to see some new members across and existing ones. Thanks for the support. 90 stuff up on Patreon at the moment. And um, any newcomers and also continued support on YouTube. Appreciate it. I'm not going to ask to like and subscribe because I don't like doing that. By default. Let's desolder. Okay, so the gun is over here just warming up. It says wait on the screen. Sorry, that's far away for you. There's the, the noise of the vac. And then I think what you just get a little bit of solder ready. I haven't got a stand for this. Go and get me a long stand, please. Or some Skyox. Chris, please. Chris, get the Skyox. Chris, get the Skyox. I don't know where Chris is. He's is AWOL. I'm going to give him a call and see where he is. Right, I'm going to desolder the first one. I'm going to go for this one at the back. So on it goes like a soldering gun would, but there's a hole in the middle of the tip. Wait for the pad to melt. Now these are big pads, so you've got to make sure it turns into complete liquid solder. And to do that, you add a bit of solder to help you along the way. I'm going to increase the temperature. This is requiring it to be hotter, so I'll go up a bit. Up to 400. Take that off. So that's not got down because the body of the relay is metal. It's pretty, pretty tough solder. So it's not doing it. You have to get up to 400 first. I might even go higher than that and max it up for this. We're going up to. These go up to 11. Why don't you just make. 10 the, the loud, no, 11 the loudest. Why do you make 10 the loud one and have that as the loudest number? These go to 11. That's better. Whoa, it's gone. That actually requires further work. These, on large pads, it's not as quick as, as little transistor pads and stuff like that. But it should, in theory, do it. So why else didn't they use one of these? One of them kind of things once you've got, you can't do without. If it doesn't get it, we can jack it out by just heating it and prising it slowly, but it's not the best way. I'm only doing this because I'm curious about these contacts on these relays and it would it does fit with the type of fault that we're getting as it switches across from trickle to main would try and activate one of these and if it's not seeing a contact made perhaps it knows and it, it knocks it out these ones will go easy because these are the coil pads bang gone barry beffled that one we barry beffled it Sounded like my cat snoring then. Eh? 
Any any others? I think it's that pattern. Or is it that pad? See, the thing is, you've got to remember the pattern. The pattern of the pads is one of those. Right, we're going to investigate. But you get the idea with this. So I'll keep hammering away. And uh, I doubt this will come off. There's no holster for the desolder. Let me just see about this. It's a really beefy board. Let's have a try. I'm going to need my higher powered iron for this kind of... We're going to need shotguns for this kind of deal. Does it use the normally closed, which case would cause all sorts of issues if it did, because then normally closed ones are... Ah, I'm straddling across the two. I've gone across the wrong ones. I'm going to take them all out because I can't see what I'm doing. You idiot. I've gone half between two. Uh, <laughs> Well, I cleared the bench. I almost got that unit working. Uh, got it down to a relay. Then what I did when I soldered this relay in, I shorted two tracks together, my mistake, and took out one of the rectifiers in the power supply. I'm waiting for a part for that. It might never go again. So I'm going to look on eBay if there's any breakers on there. So unfortunately, I tried there to get that going. But I can't put any more time into that. It was free. So I'm going to get on and fit Papa's parcel shelf now. That was a little bit of tech. Soldering stuff for you. Switching off the irons. Soldering irons down. We're going to switch to something else. Apologies, I couldn't show you success there. On that very expensive charging unit. It would have been nice. I would have, I would have painted it in red. And put it under the Krypton. As a sort of... Uh, factory looking piece of um charging equipment if i see one on ebay cheap i might buy it because i do i did get attached to it when it was running oh it's a shame i'm gonna switch to something else so sorry we can't conclude that one we have to move on though got to just i've done four hours on it and that's enough it's time to move on pc cortina city and yeah big apologies that we couldn't fix that really juicy power pack battery charge it would have been nice wouldn't it because it's uh such a good quality make, <clears throat> but we couldn't do it. And uh, so I left you on the bench with half a relay. Funnily enough, just before I finished that clip, I actually got another part of the circuit to fire up. Then it came up in German and I crashed its memory and apparently you've got to send it away to get the software re put on. So, damn. But if I ever see a scrapper on eBay, I'll buy it if it's cheap enough. And we could always swap parts. That's something for the future. It's not worth spending any more time on now. I've gone to the tip, another tip run, because I left you tidying up the workshop as well. And guess what? You know what happens when we go to the tip. We end up coming back with more stuff than we talk. <laughs> Look at this. Oh yeah. A meter mech lighted dial clock. Okay, so that bad boy. That looks like there's a window on top of this, and I reckon that's a light sensor. And I reckon when it goes dark, the dial lights up. That's what I think on that. So we'll be looking at that bad boy of pop on the bench because we may as well make use of the bench. It's a repair bench after all. I've got this out of the skip. It's like a display stand per spec, but it must be for leaflets. But I reckon you could use it for your sort of current popular. Take eight track display holder. Oh yeah, eight track display holder. Nice. And also, the fun doesn't stop there, folks at Cortina City. Look at this bad boy. A Grundig. A Grundig. What's it called? Is it an ambassador? Did I? I'm sure I read the name of this. Oh, Prima Boy. Grundig Prime Prima Boy. 600 slim nice uh, action tuner there it's got all the stations long wave medium k band and u band and it's got the luxembourg all the, the munchen there uh, the uh the german cities there as well and, and countries brussels there budapest stuttgart all that on that set so we can play with that too because it was free off the skip and 
and la pièce de résistance over this side over this side <laughs> look at this who said i've not been cutting my grass i actually left the grass on purpose to just wild out a little bit and um, just let the bees have a bit of fun rather than cutting it with an inch of its life but the main reason that i didn't mow the grass I didn't have a mower did i until today <laughs> Look at this bad boy. This is a web diplomat 350. Oh, look at the action. Now this was a highly stealth mission. This unbolts, that folds forward. Would you believe that that diplomat fits in the boot of a certain brown Mark III Cortina? Now let's talk about the tip before we dig into this. We'll do the electronic items later. I'm keen to get the grass cut. Whilst it's absolutely peeing it down, and it has been because of that uh, low pressure that we've been having with the jet stream, we've not had much of an August, have we, folks, in England? What a joke. We've chucked it down every day, haven't we? But it's going to have to dry up one day. And when it does, the diplomat's going to be there to take care of the business. Will it start? Dot com. One million views. Will it start? Will it spark? We're ready. I've got the spark plug out. Got some fresh petrol because we've got turpentine in here. I can smell it straight away. We just don't know why dump good working stuff. I don't understand it. This might go. People just chuck stuff away. You could make use of all of these things, you know, underground, overground. You make use of all of the everyday things that local people leave behind. Now, I want to talk to you before we dig deep into this. Don't forget, um, don't worry rather, that uh, we will be continuing with Mark III Cortina stuff because uh, KP needs the rear parcel shelf speakers fitting and the parcel shelf putting back. We're going to do some more road tests on that. Then we're going to be doing a few more uh, jobs on the car and a couple of road trips as well. And plenty more Cortina and mechanically based stuff to satisfy everybody. But in the meantime, and as a little bit of a leisurely interlude, not only will you get a drive out, we're doing a one hour drive with Pete C at the wheel of Papa, a one hour Friday night music special, what we call the, uh, the after hours one hour special. When the main uh, tech vids run, you can then take your pick and leave, or you can stay on the live chat on the Friday, keep on quaffing. The idea is, it's a bit of a drinker's party uh, after the main tech video is played out. Music of your choice, music that you like. City music seems to be the one that you like. So we'll stick on the City 8 track and we'll drive. We're going to have different angles. I've got a couple more lenses set up on the car, a couple more cameras to give you a bit more of a viewing experience as well. So basically the idea behind the music video is going to be simply entertainment, and and chat because as the music's playing there it enables the chat window to be running and really it's a social thing we should really be down the pub to be fair anyway enough of that what i want to talk about before i, I just jumped off on that tangent was the the um the tip nazis or the skip nazis or the the recycling depot nazis right i went in there and i brought stuff in and there's, the, you, know, you, you know your local recycling depot. You've got your wood, you've got your grass cuttings, you, you know, your green grass uh, area, you know, tree branches and the like. You've got your wood, you've got your glass, you've got your hard plastics, your metal, cardboard and non recyclable waste, then electrical items, televisions, fridges, microwaves and stuff. Televisions, curiously, are separate. There'll be a reason for that, I'm, I'm sure. Fridges are separate, I know that because of the gas, R1. Three, four has to be extracted and whatever else they have to do. But the skip for the clock and the radio there is, I'm suspicious, I think it just gets fragmented. And because the name on the side of the skip was one of a, a recycling depot on, on Liverpool docks, which isn't far from me at all. And I know they have a fragging machine there. I think all the electrical items get fragged. It's crazy, there was a complete Henry the Hoover. I mean, he had all the attachments. And it was a dual speed one, nice model. And he was in there, I thought, I've got to get him out. Anyway, I got caught. 
and I'm not banned from there, but I got caught. Stop, I don't, I don't know why the camera stops. I got caught taking the clock and the radio out. Not, funnily enough, I didn't with this, because this was by the metal, and I just stuck it in the boot. And I, and I don't care. I don't care. This is one of those moral things, isn't it, of course? Do you think, do you think if you were hauled into, into court and the magistrates were there, and you was uh, getting prosecuted by Virio, whoever the uh, the council have contracted out now, and the press charges for stealing a lawnmower. Do you think I care? No, not at all. And neither would the general public either. So this is a, a crusade. We've rescued it. But the Nazis were on to me anyway, and they said, uh, you're not to take that stuff. Uh, you're not to take anything out of there. So they hadn't, I'd, I'd got a plastic box. And I'd, I'd tipped all my stuff in and then sort of sneaked the radio and the clock in. I don't care. I don't care. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I don't care. So I rescued that stuff. But they're all over you. And the next time that I went, they then watched me every move. And I was leaning against the recycling skip, the, sorry, the um, domestic product skip, you know, the, the, the skip I just got the clock and radio out of. Um, and they just said, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm just resting, got a condition, just resting. They're all over me. The, uh, the recycling Nazis don't want you to take stuff out of the skips. I think that's ridiculous. I think that when you come into the tip and you're responsible and you just take something out of there, if, you, if you're not obviously a trader, I mean, yeah, they could say, well, people are making money out of this by taking stuff out and selling it on. But I think that's what they should be doing, to be fair, because it's what's it gonna do? It's gonna get smashed up. It's such a shame. And it just goes to show the jobs worth at the tip. They're really miserable down there, you know, as well. When he was council run, used to have a bit of a laugh, but they're I reckon just, they're really miserable down at my local tip. Gang of miseries, I thought, lighten up, lighten up. Life's too short, mate, lighten up. Let's get a lawnmower going! <laughs> right, well, first things first, it's going to need fuel. But I've got turfs coming out. Let me put on. I hope that this lamp doesn't. If I use a 12 volt light, it won't strobe. I'm going to rig you up with a 12 volt lamp because that definitely won't strobe. I'll just talk to you off camera if that's all right. You just have to listen up while there's nothing going on. I'm going to put a lamp onto the tripod and point it so you'll get a bit of shakiness here and I'm going to light you up this way with my inspector lamp also oh no this is from a car boot so, uh, or a jumble right that's a bit better a bit of bit of light on the natural light let's go down here and make sure you're in shot then so let's get this all set up yes yeah yeah yes right spot watch this you can see that in the camera there's a nice clean spark there across. How can you see it? Miles away! <laughs> that's sparking, so that's going to work. But I'm not going to put it in just yet. Fuel. Whoa! Come back, fuel cap. Let's get some fuel in after we dump this crap. I suppose we'd have to flush a little bit through. Let me get a container. That for the oil. A container for the, for the garbage coming up. Oh, screens now. Nah, let's dump out this, I can smell it. That pipe's brittle too. So watch that. There it goes. Right, so there's good. That looks like turps. I've just used 95 fuel. I don't know if that's right or not, but. The amber nectar in there. Right, that's flushed through. Whoa. Right, so that will go. That back on there. Open the floodgates. That fills that up. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in it. So, you know, the things people throw out. I don't think that funnel will do. Let me get a smaller funnel. We're not going to get that with the oil. I have to come up with a, a way of doing it. And try this little porridge jug. I don't. No, there's no. Whoa, we've got petrol coming. 
Oh no, We've got fuel coming out all over the place. Things are bad, folks. Turn off the fuel. So we've got a carburetor problem straight away. It's coming out the top of the carb. Whew. I have to turn that off, haven't I? Do not have a naked light now, whatever you do. Right, that's off. Is it on there? We've definitely got a leak. See what that, yeah, right, it's coming out of a little breather hole at the top for some reason. I wonder if it's just something stuck. Everything has a reason why. <clears throat> There's a bowl under this, we better open that up. Get the oil in first, we're going to be right back. Right, filling up the fuel and we've got a leak straight away fuel is coming out the top of the carburetor there's like a breathe hole there now why would it come out of that that's because the float is probably jammed down it'll have a, a bowl float in here with a needle valve on it and that'll be jammed down before i do anything though i'm going to put the oil in and clean it up so that that's out of the way can't quite get the oil in, but if I tilt the engine forward, I will be able to. I'm not sure what the procedure there goes the spark plug would be for putting in the oil. But let's put it in that way. I don't know how much because there's no dipstick. You could have plenty in already. We don't know. Let me get a torch and see if I can see the oil. You just don't know what's happened. There's always a reason why something goes to the tip, I know that. I don't know how that dipstick would ever work. Certainly got a carburetor problem. And as I say, it could be just a stuck float. Right, I've got this the fuel going in and it's we've got a leak coming out of many places on that bowl. I don't know if that's a 13 or a 10. I'm going to have a span. I think the float is stuck. This is the carburetor's leaking. It's not a 10. What is it? It's an 11, maybe. Yeah, an 11. I'm going to take the bowl off. It's going to pour petrol out. Let's just see this bowl off. That's a drain. A drain. Chamber drain. I don't think that takes the bowl off. Yes, it does. Right. That's all gunked up in there. It's like a... Um, tar and there is a little seal that doesn't look good either i don't think that's ever going to seal you can see here there's a a little drain thing and it seals on a rubber but we could put a new rubber on that that's never going to work it's always going to leak and there's the the valve, so if we, I'm just wondering if you have to bleed it, if I just turn on the fuel, let's just see where, where it leaks, if it stops. So that is working, because that's stopped. So we're halfway in now. Turn that off, so if the bowl fills up, then the fuel stopped leaking, assuming that. There's no leak further down the line. I know it's probably gonna leak from that little air 
bleeder as well. Let's just see. Let it fill up. Seems to have stopped doing it. Okay, so that's the next stage. That stopped leaking. I should press this and it should let petrol out. Yeah, it does. So, right, that's just about sealing. I could do with a new part on it so we can get that ordered. So we've kind of got fuel into the system. There's a either a choke. I don't know if it's choke, fast idle or off here. We could Google it up and have a look. I've got a new computer as well, also off the tip, which I'll show you in a sec. It's, it's amazing what they put on that tip. Um, we would pull this and a fuel air mixture. Let's just make sure we're not going to ignite right. I'll tell you what we'll do as well. Just for safety, we've got this because there's fuel around. If it does go up, I'm ready. I'll put the cap on the fuel tank. How much fuel did I put in there? Enough, didn't I? I'll put that on. Take you around here. So fuel air mixture should come out of there. Nice and easy to turn over. I may have put too much oil in there, I don't think so. We have nothing to lose. Okay, that's that. Spark plug back in. I'll have to open the door. As soon as we get a, a hint of it starting, I'm ready to get the garage doors open. Now we've spent we're only on this about 15 20 minutes so far initially looking good the carburetor has stopped leaking and then i just see if i get any hint of anything no signs of life Right, I've got the carburetor off the lawnmower. Uh, it's not starting. There's fuel in it and it ain't going. So carburetor's off. It's only two bolts holding on there. There was a stuck throttle linkage at the top, but I freed that up. So we're getting throttle. The float works. If you blow down the inlet, uh, the top up, or the, the fuel line feed, it uh, switches off and on the tap. So that fills up. And floats the chamber. I don't know if that's the main jet in the middle. <clears throat> I think this is the idle jet at the side, which is clear. I've had the compressed air in, and I think the main jet is that one, and I can't get it out. It's stuck in. I presume that's the main jet. I'm going to look this up on the internet now and just see. It's a Delarotto carburetor, but there's nothing to it. Now, the engine did cough when I sprayed a little bit of Easy Start in it, so I know the timing and the coil ignition pack works, obviously, because we had a spark as well. So really, it can only be the fuel feed, it can only be this, and then this thing will definitely fire up. Mechanically, we don't know if, it, if the chain drive works or if it'll set off and go down across the, the grass, but I have blasted this with compressed air. I could just put it on, hoping that I've cleared the main jet. It will just be a block jet, I'm sure, because there's nothing to it. If it fires with easy start, petrol and air mixture is just the same. So it's getting air, it's just not getting petrol. The air cleaner filter was um, completely broken down. The sponge had gone, so I've took that out. So it needs a new air filter pad. Other than that, there's nothing to it. It's just two jets, but that one is seized in from what I can tell. If 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 indeed it is a jet, I'm going to check on the uh, the web now and see. Right, gently, I've got this main jet turning now. The other jet was an idle, uh, sorry, a mixture screw, not 
not an idle jet. This was gummed up bad. It just didn't want to come out. So some um, plus gas. Then basically I went forward on it. Then tightened backwards in small movements. Till those movements got bigger. Just because by doing that you start to break down whatever the gum and gunk is holding it in. So eventually I got it. Otherwise you would end up stripping the head of this. So we managed it all right. Looks terrible colour. All we can do is clean that out. So we can assume that's, they call it an atomizer, but it's a jet. So that's it. There it is. So we'll just get the compressed air in there now. Air in there. See what happens. Fuel gets drawn through there on the Venturi effect, I would presume, as it blasts across the top. <sighs> Clean it all out, put it back together, that's all we can do. I think we'll get it going off this when this is clean. Because there's nothing else that works. The mixture screw doesn't really count that much. So all this does is just the fuel gets drawn through this and then put into the, the airstream, comes out of there and spark plug ignites it. Well, it's managing to ignite other fluids. And indeed, if I pour petrol in this, which I did earlier, it kicks off and off you go. So it's got to be this. I'm, I'm pretty confident it's that. see still on our lawnmower okay I put the carburetor back together and it didn't make any difference however I went back to the jet okay and I thought well I've left, well, left the carb on now but I just you can get the jet off with a bowl down there's nothing to it I each time you squirt a little bit of easy start in there it goes and if you just keep giving it a little you shouldn't do for too long you damage the engine but it's going, so there's just no fuel getting in. And there's only one thing stopping it. You've got a bowl here full of petrol. You've got a, a jet sat in it, and you've got the Venturi effect. That's the air flowing across the top of this, creating suction, which should draw it up and distribute it through those atomizers. But it doesn't work. I had a look at the jet and blew it out. Sounds good, listen. Jet's clear. Well, it ain't because the jet has a little hole at the bottom of it, which I didn't know about. It's covered in gunk and that's blocked. So I'd add the airline on there, but I think that's the pickup. I was thinking that was capped off in the bowl, but I don't think it is. I think that's the actual fuel pickup. And then it's sucked at the top and blown and drawn out through those holes. I, that is the pickup, so this is why the lawnmower does not work. That little tiny jet is blocked. We need some minute wire to open this up, and I reckon any money it will go this time. I think we're on. I really do. I'm very confident now um, that, that it's going to go. I think we're in business. I think just that little hole there, it's definitely blocked. Definitely getting the air and there's nothing coming out of it. Watch. Well, you can't, you can't watch, but you know what I mean. It's just blocked, solid. Let's get on, clear this out, put it back in, and I reckon then it will go. All right, then, folks, I've found where the jet is, or the the sorry, the, the the uptake for the fuel is just between these two rings here, and I think that was blocked. So now it can draw the fuel in from the the bowl, sorry I was off screen then, from the bowl there, there's a the little jet, so I just put the compressed air down there and then I think I've got it cleaned out. It's time to put that back in and give it a shot. It wasn't at the bottom, it's the side between there and there, I think that's definitely fixed, I don't think that's an intake, it, it makes more sense that it's there. 
so there must be a little chamber I'm just going to have a look in the float see how that would fit that's located inside the carburetor there must be a little area like a catch where this sits in so I'll go and check that as well let's go and see if there's nothing else in that so the remaining part of the carburetor okay I was definitely right to check that float area because here can you see that hole right in the middle of your screen that's where it fills the jet so this jet here goes in this hole was blocked completely just found that that hole there on my thumb was totally blocked completely blocked so we had no chance of getting fuel in I thought I couldn't smell any I took the plug out took the spark plug out then blew air through the uh, inlet the air inlet intake where the air filter is and you'd expect it to be sucking up petrol as it goes along and it just didn't smell petrolly at all just dry so the petrol couldn't get in it has to go through that hole there's no other way out of this float bowl chamber except that hole there and that was blocked so now we'll put it back together and we should get it we should at least get petrol coming through I'd be very surprised this doesn't go now so now I understand the jet I tried to look online but I couldn't get any quick info so I just delved in straight to it straight to a PC this skip radar we are skip ratting it folks we are skip rats look out for those recycling Nazis at the tip who don't want you to take home a little piece of England and fix it up in the you know it's good for your mental health to, to save something out of a skip you can always bring it back what's the big problem it's like when it's like when you couldn't go outside during the pandemic and you couldn't get vitamin D I mean you know some have some common sense please will everybody please can the people at the skip at the tip please have some common sense and stop being jobs with in high-vis jackets you're not that important i mean yeah you're doing a great service but but don't be nazis you're not you're not please let us take stuff out of the skips come on well i'm expecting great things from the mower that jet did have that side hole blocked and also I was wrong the screw uh, slot at the bottom does have a hole through it which was also blocked leading us to now get the fuel in choke it up and try and get somewhere did have a cough of life just then so I think we're on we might have uh, gone in the game there's a little spring at the side <laughs> you're straight in and you're straight in come on tip rescue mower straight in so we can um, we've got some rattling coming from there there's a clutch in here uh, I've noticed online looking how they work it's got a little centrifugal clutch which rattles so something's loose there but we'll um, we'll give it a shot we'll go and uh, mow some grass and see what happens why not so that was that job we're gonna open up the glass doors and roll this uh, diplomat 350 out into town and doing some research last night i found that it's a suffolk punch actually rebadged it's a a metro rebadged me mini metro for the rover so uh, yeah rover 350 rebadged as a mini metro so not as you see the old web company um was bought up by qualcast and then they started getting rid of the lovely briggs and stratton engines never mind let's take it out hey let's guess let's get this mow on the road hey eh? well first mow went good looks like we need an adapter for the um the bucket there there seems to be a bracket missing off it but uh, let's go for a little run
glass is wet so we're not going to do too, too much but there it is when uh, we get some dry weather I'll slowly start working at this there's also frogs about which I'm very wary of so I um, don't want to run any over but um, yeah we're good to go let's move on to something else all right here's the unit back out of the garden I said I'd uh, move on to something else but there is a rattling noise and this might be the reason why it was scrapped coming from this cupboard which has got to be the drive so it is the drive to the, uh, to the blade the set whatever you want to call it fair bit of play in that there's a tensioner here that won't help but there's the noise and there's the problem that is the top oh yeah no we can't uh, we can't run it folks we've got a bearing out here no that's the that's the, there's a centrifugal clutch in here as it spins it whips the uh, clutch plates out and grips the drum similar on like mobiletti scooters and stuff like that so I presume there's a double bearing there we'd have to lock that undo that nut and see if you can get a new bearing it's not going to run like that so we'll have to strip that down we come a bit closer and take this cover off where is that held another screw at the front there we go Okay, let's see what we got. Yeah, there's three bolts holding like a bearing plate on at the back. That's been hitting the the clutch drum, so we need to get that done. That's no good. But how do you get that out? I don't know how that comes out. Three bolts at the back. Is there three bolts at the back? There is. It's tight. I don't know if that would withdraw. We'd have to move the engine back. The engine doesn't connect to anything underneath. Four bolts. Sword. What would stop that engine moving there? Nothing. I actually think the engine will just slide back, actually. Let's have a look at that. Bring you round. See what you think at home. We always like to get the viewers thoughts these push back then there's three bolts holding the the bearing on the here that can't be run like this that's also going to cause it to slightly engage when it shouldn't because it'll be getting a bit of contact grip which will spin the blades i thought they were coming off and on on their own and a little bit of play in the the belt but hopefully we can get the bearing for this I'm going to have to unbolt the engine and slide it back. There's no other way. 13's on these. I've got the two on the other side. Hello, come in. Someone knocking at the door. Somebody ringing the bell. Do me a favour. Open the door and let them in. Okay. Right, this should slide back. Yeah, to us, surprisingly easy. What's this little tab here? Another oh, captive nut. No, there's like a shim packer piece there for some reason, but that comes back very easy. Bring it around now, this side. There's the clutch I was telling you about. How much life's left on the clutch? Not much. Oh my, no, they're gone. They're gone. I'm afraid they are gone down to the rivers. So it's going to need shoes or clutch shoes taking 
off and bring it right in so you can see. Hold on, we're coming in. Hold on. Here we have the centrifugal cuts and the shoes are about to detach. But they're well gone. This this is okay. The whole thing comes off anyway on a bolt. That comes off on three bolts at the back, but I don't know how you withdraw. Oh, you can withdraw the entire shaft once the engine's out of the way. That way there's a nut at the end. So undo that nut and that cup, that drum would come off so that you can insert a new bearing. So that's what needs, it needs all that area done. It's well worn folks, that's probably why they scrapped it. It's a miracle we even got a little run there in the garden. That's where we're at, so it's parts ordering time. Not much we can do on this project now till those parts come in. There's just completely, we're stuck in the water there. So we'll leave that project, we'll get Googling and we'll go on to something else. And then we'll come back to the project a little more. We need to keep this Cortina, this video, so people are going to complain. There was another item that we salvaged, and that is, if I switch on, this screen you see here off an old scrap, another piece of scrap we picked up is a touch panel. Look, so I've got a desktop computer again salvaged. I think it has to just wake up for the, the mouse to pick up, but there it goes. This is a touch panel and you can see I've just used it to Google parts for this lawnmower, but that's a, a touch panel, it's great. And I've connected it into an old knackered PC. It's booting up now that I found on the tip. And we got that going after us messing with the lawnmower. We've been busy at the tip. Don't forget we've still got our tip clock to do and our tip radio to do and everything else that I keep on acquiring because every time I go there I end up with something but look this is great you can touch screen it's in tablet mode with Windows automatically recognizes this as a as a tablet but it's not it's a display panel out of some equipment how about that working nice there's the fuel bowl for the carburetor I was looking at I was trying to find out if the jets had a hole at the bottom. I couldn't find out, and I've, I, I worked out that they did. That's how we got the lawnmower working. But yeah, there's another nice feature, and I've connected a speaker to it. So the workshop's now got a computer which we can use for uh, when we're doing work on here, circuit diagrams and stuff, right at my fingertips. No mouse in the way, just scroll. You can use a mouse. And the keyboard, you just slide across from the side, and in, out it comes. So... I can put Cortina into this for, for Google. Go on to Google, uh, forget the carburetor. Go on to search. Delete all that. And then, um, yeah, kick up going. Type in Cortina. See how easy it is? You don't get a messy keyboard all covered in oil. And off it goes. Images. Cortina in Italy, of course. That's it. We've got ourselves, got ourselves a touchscreen computer set up. How about that? That's going to be handy for research, folks. I'm keeping on going. I've wired it all in nice. I've trunked it all in. I'll put it back. The wires all go underneath there. And some trunking at the back. Feeding down to the computer, you don't see any cables. Very neat. Very neat for the workshop. Workshop looking good. As I said, mower is now an ongoing project because of that clutch. But it's got potential. Let's hope it doesn't turn out to be expensive because at the moment we're running at a very low cost. Just for a bit of city fun. Now the lawnmower is just stashed to one side and I've managed to find a new clutch for it on eBay, 12 quid. So we're not running into mega money with that lawnmower. Let's have a look at the, uh, the salvaged clock. What is this? That's just the mains input. Strange having a cover like that. So if it goes out that way, I don't know how this works. Hmm, can we open it up? No doubt it's got a bulb in it because 
it says illuminated fascia or lighted dial which way out though this is the thing which way do we go that way boom the hand just fell off yeah that way for that but what about the rest of it we push that way and down on the light sensor I think it is a light sensor the face will come off with the hands I should clean my hands really there we go where's our bulb the illuminated dial no sensor in there. What is it? Where's the bulb? No bulb. There must be. going on here there's a button that you press it is it to cancel the alarm that's that plastic that conveys light can send light through it you'd have to undo those two contacts to get the mains I think that's the whole lot comes out If I took off that's loose, so that's going to come out that way. Seventy nine, so we've got a date on this. And I can't see how this is coming off. It does move. I think that was stuck actually. Oh I see. It's the alarm cancel button. You press that when you wake up to turn it off, so that turns off the alarm since it's a lighted face I can't see any where you would light that up I have to undo that keep that one separate and that way round lift that off there you go there is no bulb visible so I don't know how they come up with the idea that it's an illuminated dial Definitely says that, doesn't it? Lighted dial. No lighted dial. Some rust. I think we can plug it in now and have a look. I see nowhere for a bulb to go. Oh, 
Ah, is that it? There it is. I've got it. <clears throat> There's a bulb here. Neon one. So it must send the, the neon through that special plastic. Just about. Right, okay. Put all the bits. I'll plug it in. See what happens. In we go to the mains. Whoops. Something's going. It's turning. There's a little TikTok device. It's noisy though. That's the TikTok device. Strange idea. Wow, it's a little flicker that makes it supposed to make a ticking noise. Bulb doesn't work though. It's gone. noisy Okay, found the, the light on the clock, on the illuminated face of this scrap heap clock that we found, clock that we found, and that neon or small bulb's gone. It was very dim, it's blacked out, so it's gone. <clears throat> and it sat just in this little holder here at the back. This clips down. And it would have sent the light sort of through the face there. The clock itself does run, although it's got a noisy gears. It's very clunky and noisy. So it's a, it's a high mileage unit. It's had a lot, a lot of use. You could LED inside here if you wanted with a small power supply and you'd get this. But I, I, I suspect it would have been a more warmer glow than what an LED will give. It could have even been like a neon light up effect. I don't know, but yeah. Without a lamp, we can't get that to light up, so we'll just put it back together, I think. I'll keep my eyes out for a little neon indicator light, but I can't see... Whatever it was, it must have been bright to get through the workings of the clock and create this to light up, you know, so it must have had some power to get through there. And you, you wonder why they just didn't have the bulbs here. Why have they chosen to root all the lamp bulb? You can see the heat has um, scorched the plastic there. Why didn't they just directly light the face of this up? Why did they go through the clock itself? You could have just 
had a bulb there and there. I don't know, there's got to be a reason for it. I'd love to know the reason. And I can't work out how the bell would sound on this. There's no actual sound of buzzer or bell that I can see. I can only think that it uses mechanics to make some kind of loud clicky noise, but I can't see what would create the noise. There is an extra cog in there, but it's got to be some kind of click sound that would have been the alarm. It wouldn't be very nice, whatever it was. There's definitely no... I can see any kind of buzzer solenoid or anything and it doesn't use this this is just the the ac motor there spinning that it's quite crude not really much to it i like the design of it and it's a shame i'd like to have seen that lit back up and back in action but there's only so much time you can spend on each of these things given that it's just a bit of fun and we have to keep moving we'll have a look at the radio next but uh, I'd like, if I'm going to put this back, I'd like it all as it should be. So without that bulb, I'd see it as an unfinished project. I'd have to box it. I'll probably put it back together. And then in the future, if I ever see one of these bulbs or find a way out how they did it, I can come back and solder it in. I might just put it back together and leave it running, see if it keeps time. And then one day we come back uh, with the bulb. So I think that's what we'll do. I'm just going to clean all the parts anyway before I put them back together. Got some contact cleaner there. Not to use IPA on this plastic, it leads into it. So I'll just clean the perspex up. Put the clock back as it was. Get the hands on next. And then this just clips on to the front. Pretty easy to take to pieces. I was thinking you can get these uh, LED mains bulbs now, miniature ones for feature lighting around the home and stuff. So I might have a look in B&Q next time I'm in there just to see what's out there. Okay, using the overhead fluorescent light to stop any strobing. You know we've had problems with strobing. So we're using that. That's it really for this bad boy. It could just be a display piece. I might uh, look on eBay, see what if there are any. I, I quite like them. I'd like to see if there's one on eBay that's uh, working. But uh, there's that option of the LED mains bulbs. One on either side would light that face up quite nice. You can probably get some with an orange glow. I think it would have had a neon type glow to it personally looking at that bulb, but I never thought those neon bulbs were that bright, especially to penetrate through all the workings of the clock like they've done it here. I'm very curious how it worked and also to see what the buzzer was on this. And it's, say, I think it's 19, we, we did get that date, I think it was, was it 78? We'll Google it up, we can always, we've got the computer there. As you know, we've got this, I was looking at LEDs, the of course, we've got our grate. So if we wanted to do it, actually, you'd put... Um, what would we put in there for that? Meter mech. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the clock. Meter mech. Lighted dial. That's what they called it. And it hasn't got a model number. I don't think. Let's have a look. See the joy of this scrapyard uh, PC that we've got going here. Meter Merc. Plenty there. Let's do images. What we got? Anything looking like ours? That's similar. Is that the one? It's loads, isn't it? That looks similar. That's it. Get away. 80 quid? That says repeat on that one. This one doesn't. 80 quid? This is in orange. 
It's like that button's not right at the top of there. They always make them look good when they photograph them like this. But uh, yeah, it's, it is stylish. I actually do like the orange one. Look good on the back seat of KP. But no, I'll keep uh, I'll keep on looking at that anymore. Just if we can see our model. Looking on what we got wearing white. I think that's the closest to it. I've got that clock and I've got that clock. I do collect them, by the way. We digress, but you see the point. Go on, we'll put this back together and move on. I've gone crazy. This is a car channel. <laughs> I actually think I've worked out how they've done it. This is that translucent type plastic and it's going inside first through and I think that must pick up the the light somewhere you otherwise you wouldn't have this plastic. So somehow they're transmitting the light into this. This is I'm sure this is that stuff that's got total internal reflection on it. So I think that's how they did it. Got the light somehow to get into here. However they did it and then send it round that. I don't know. I mean I could look shining a lamp into this and see what happens in the dark to see if it uh, carries a light across. This has got something to do with it else you wouldn't have that piece there like that. So it's got to be that the light sent through this. I think that's how it works. back together you can see light must have scattered around here it is interesting got that button fixed in there now as well for the cancel the alarm there you go so that's how that would have worked that's back up but I don't know how the hell it made a noise, folks. I think I guess how it lit up now. So, our hand on, don't forget, line them up at 12. And I think actually <clears throat> looking at this, the alarm hand, it's been apart because that's bent and I, don't, I definitely didn't bend that. I think that was on first, it was, and then the hours, then the minutes, you put them all at 12 so that it lines up when you turn at given times. Check that that operates which it does, check you can alter that, which you can. I heard something click then as though it set the alarm, but I don't think so. Five o'clock, the jam, and then clean this bit of plastic for the non-attacking plastic cleaner. You may say, what are you doing wasting your time on this? Well, the poor little clock has survived all this time. So someone wanted to throw the poor thing away. Just think, I mean, yeah, if it was 78, I think it's earlier, but it was 78, it survived, whatever it survived, you know, all that time. 
and then someone comes along and just throws it in the bin. I think it's horrible. Now, where did that go? Help. I think it went. Yeah, I've got it. This way. And that is our clock back together. Apart from this base cover, I like it. I'm going to start collecting these. Let's just see if it actually goes. The bulb connects to this, by the way. So I'd like to get the original bulb. I think if I don't, it'll OCD me out, botching it with LEDs and stuff. I did, I did mock an LED into it just before. It didn't penetrate through. So mind you, I didn't have that plastic on. I'm gonna suss that out after. These are freewheeling. We'll have to be careful. They are the ones that came out the bottom. Yeah, that one's right. Oh no, I'm wrong, they're okay. That's it, back together. Good old meter met clock. Plug it in, see what happens. Oh, boom! My my bench, my seat is a is a, a step ladder at the moment. I don't hear anything. I'm switched on by the way. Whoa, that's the that's how it does it, but where was that? Oh, now you tell me. I don't know how they've done that. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, certainly is. And I can hear it click it, I can hear it ticking. Well, it doesn't tick actually, it's just a motor, but it does have a pseudo tick thing, but the little piece had broke and it wasn't quite doing the ticky noise, which is a shame. If we set it, the time now is, well, it's going quick, it's 20 to 7. So, set for 20 to 7. And uh, when I did first plug it in, when, when I got it, and it was making a hell of a noise, all the gears and cogs, but I've cleaned them with some contact cleaner. It's just I don't think I recorded that bit, but I had to give it a douse down. I can hear a motor going. We'll just have to see. I mean, it's a silent runner. It's a shame it doesn't make the ticky noise. But that could be something in the workshop. We could find a bulb. We could do something with this. I've kind of like set it up so it looks like the evening, but it's not it's still light outside. Uh, I put these on and we get stroked to hell. Well, that's just might not do with the, uh, with the extra light on. I don't think you're strobing now. Perhaps so worried about that, spoiling the other videos. And don't forget, by the way, this is just a tech bit of fun video. It's not, it's Cortina City just having a bit of fun. You don't have to watch, but... You know, we get the live chat box going, so it gives us something in the background while we're doing the live chat. That's basically filler material. Yeah, two positions on that alarm. It's got a halfway. No, feels like there's a halfway point, but I don't think there is. Yeah, there's the tick control. Let's just, we've got a toothbrush here. Let's clean that. I want to nurture this now. And anamorphosize it, but I do want to nurture it. A, a, a scribe human attribute to clock. I don't know. You would have to psychoanalyze that if there's any. We had the mathematicians on not long ago when we said what's the odds of 921 and 922K on the reg plates being consecutive to the same, issued to the same owner, me. I think someone come up with this one in a million. One in 922,000, 922. One in a million. 
So what would we be profiling ourselves if you if you're seeing kind of human feelings towards inanimate objects? There must be Freud's class out there. Twenty-five to oh no, has it moved? <laughs> has it moved? Better out of them. Otherwise, it's coming back to it's coming back to pieces. I will check. I can't see them. There was nothing. I put everything back on. I'm sure I did. Mind you, I wouldn't mind taking it apart. See how the hell that uh, buzzer works. There must be something else in there we didn't see. I didn't see. Okay. Should have moved by now. So, looks like it doesn't work. I can hear it ticking. The only thing is, I could, might not put the hands on properly, but or it could have been stuck. I do hear it ticking now. I will let you know. We're not going to sit here and watch paint dry. See in a sec. You get the idea. Well, we're pleased to say it's uh, running and the uh, the clock is ticking on that. It's on the bench. It's going to be the bench time clock for a while. It's a little bit noisy. It makes little judders now and again. But there you go. Some parts will be worn, no doubt. Anyway, it was a bit of fun. It was a little bit. It's quite relaxing to do. That's probably one of the reasons why I've done it. And... Um, well, I said we'd have a quick look at this before we go in. I'm going in at 7, so when the clock hits 7, we're going in. So we'll time it on that. I promise you, because seeing this stuff will come up. Right, so we've got a Grundig. Straight in, straight onto the mains. Can we do it? sockets we are out of sockets on do we get lights we've got noise straight in straight off the tip Good old long wave. Because I'm very bad at parking, um, and no one's going to argue or laugh at somebody's friends. Can we get any foreign stations? People think you're being whimsical. I like the tuning control. We are inside a building, medium way. That's something you've got to offer something, performance. I mean, you earn the right to be one of those. It's a Russian transmission station. Secret codes. Poems, everybody. The laddie considers himself a poet. Absolute rubbish, laddie. Get on with your work. What do we have here? Secret scribblings. A secret code. No. Poems, everybody. The laddie considers himself a poet. New car. Caviar. Four star. Daydream, think I'll buy me a football team. Absolute rubbish, laddie. Get on with your work. Okay.
finding the rhythm that the Aces are doing right now. Hey, there's no wrong with that. The Grundig Prima Boy. Let's Google it before we go. We've still got five minutes left on the clock on the bench. PC Court in the city, bringing you tech vids and junkyard finds. Touch the screen and wake up. Do will my screen? Yes, yes. Go on, my son. Go on, my son. Right, let's Google. Come on, folks. Come. You know you want to at the city. Uh, Google. Google, please. Prima Boy Grundig. Bring on the keyboard. Prima. Is it worth anything? Doubt it. Prima Boy Grundig. This 1979 set was a popular release for, for uh, the tennis. There it is. Images. Give me a price. Millions of pounds! Come on, images. See if we did it in any different colour schemes. Oh, so I'm missing the Grundig logo on the front. That says Prima Boy. That's not got all that. Oh, there's different ranges. That's got the screen on top. All sorts of different ranges. Our one is none of those. None of those, because we've got this sort of fun scrolling tuner. We haven't got the clock uh, making a, a noise there. But uh, yeah, we haven't got the one, that model. But you get the idea. And you can see how the tech bench has come together. We've fixed a lawnmower. We've messed with a clock. We've been the tip. We've took a lot of stuff to the tip. We've brought stuff back from the tip. We've got ourselves a PC up and running on the bench and you can see how that works quite nicely and that was the end of that little bit of infill and material pc at the controls hope you've enjoyed me just messing around fooling about you know we'll catch you soon i don't know where we're up to in hours i might edit this down i'll tell you what i'll do i'm going to go out in the car let's catch some some nice angles of uh, kp go for a little road trip stick some music on and um, have a little cruise, keep it Cortina, of course. Cortina and tech, bit of fun, bit of messing around. You had time to kill. Did we ever have time to kill? Let's get out on the road. We've still got 53. It's kept the time so far. Accurate, accurate to an hour. <laughs> Go on, lighted dial meter, mech lighted dial clock. You can do it. Go on, my son. A radio for tunes later. Visit keylaterlife.co.uk and use our free online calendar. That's not Martin Clunes, that's uh, uh, Lewis. Lewis. Homeowner over 55. A lifetime mortgage, a loan secured against your home, will reduce your estate's value and make. Oh, since the moment of the summer and, and also in January, and he looks like not scrambling. I'm sorry. This works well, huh? Right? On the 24th of August to play in the September draws and the next winning postcode. He has different models a 700, a 207. Oh, 600. We've got the model number. Hold on. And I've put grinding instead of grunding. Uh, I wouldn't have helped. See what we get there. No, still not coming up. There it is. Radio Radio Museum. Let's go and have a look there. Visit. See if we get a date. There you are. 73 to 76. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. 73 to 76. I don't know if you can see it of the exposure of the camera it doesn't get that screen. So I'll just put house lights on because we're winding down. That might help the exposure for you on the main screen. So Premium Boy is what Pete C thought when he went skip 
skip raiding, look to 70 set. So we see that 73 to 76. And there it is. So that's on Radio Museum, which is a popular one. If I press all, any extra info on it. Sixty-five quid. They're asking for that. Hmm. Short wave as well. Short wave, yeah. Short wave, yeah. So some stuff in that. We're missing a little clip case as well. The, the little clip cover at the bottom. It's seven o'clock. Or one minute to. There it is. Anyway, we're done. Good night. Thank you very much. PC signing out. You get the idea. Two pieces saved. This has got to be cleaned yet. Yeah? We can start to clean it, but it's missing the Grundig logo. And probably a little bit of aluminium trim has come off it. It's not got its battery cover. But it works. And that can be background sound. We can go long wave for whatever we want. Just have a radio on. Say what? Sounds better than the um, digital DAB one. PC. Over and out. Road trip time.